Take a look to the following code. It is not compiling. We are using an if statement to return either one string or another depending on the boolean condition. At the end of this video, you will understand what is an statement and why this code cannot compile in Swift 5.8 and earlier. And speaking of statements, statements are actions to do something in our program or application to control the flow of the execution. There are many kind of statements in Swift. Let's explore each of them. The first one is loop statements. Here we have four loops which can contain one or more statements within its scope. Same with while statement. Although here we just need a boolean value, not a collection. Next we have repeat while, which is different from the regular while because here we can execute the statements inside at least once, regardless of the boolean condition. Moving on, we have branch statements where we could find if statements along with else and else if. And for the case having many else if one after another, we can opt to use a switch statement instead, which is one of the most used statements in Swift thanks to many patterns and architectures like TCA. Lastly, for branch statements, we have guard statements. These are really helpful to remove nested branching in if statements and keep our code cleaner. Now let's jump to label statements. Label statements are used to provide a name to a loop or conditional statement. Without them, it would be impossible to break this outer loop because by default, break will point out to the inner loop. Next, we have defer statements. Wherever you put inside defer will be executed at the end of the execution flow of this scope. For example, you can use it to close a database connection, flush in memory, close in a file, etc. Now we have do catch statements to wrap a code that can potentially throw an error. We use catch statements similar to a switch statement finding an error that matches with the throwing error. Now let's see one of my favorite statements, compiler control statements. Here we can find conditional compilation blocks that allow code to be conditionally compiled depending on the value of one or more compilation conditions. For example, we have if compilation directive. Unlike the condition of an if statement, the compilation condition is evaluated at compile time. As a result, the statements are compiled and executed only if the compilation condition evaluates to true at compile time. You can use one of the following as compilation conditions. And you can do branching like a regular if statement too. Next, we have line control statements. A line control statement is used to specify a line number and file name that can be different from the line number and file name of the source code being compiled. This is very useful when you are designing an API and you want to improve the debugging experience for developers. We will explore that in a later video. Don't forget your like and subscribe. Next, we have compile time diagnostic statements. Here, we have two compiler directives to emit a warning or an error during compilation. A viability condition is another statement that can be used at runtime to verify if a piece of code is available for one or many platform versions. I have a video about it in the description. Finally, we have control transfer statements. Let's start with break that ends the program execution of a loop if or a switch statement. When break is followed by a label tag, it will stop the execution of that label. Next, we have continue. It is used in loops to end the execution of the current iteration and moving on to the next one. Next, we have fall through statements. Normally, when a switch case ends its execution, we move out of the switch, but using fall through, you can move to the next case below regardless of the value inspected. This is how C and C++ switch works without a break statement at the end. This is just for your information. I don't recommend to use it. Next, we have throw statement to throw an error in a function. Notice how the thrown error is actually an expression too. I already talked about thrown and error handling in another video if you want to learn more. There's a link in the description too. Finally, the one you are waiting for, return statements. Return is used in functions, closures, and methods to return an expression and going back to the point immediately where the function was called. As we explained in the previous video, an expression is simply a value that can be a single literal or a combination of operations, but at the end, it's a single unit. 
This is key to understand why this code is not working. This if is an action to do and not a value itself. Instead, we can use a ternary conditional to produce a new value after its evaluation. And at the end, it will return a new expression, which is what return is waiting for. This is true if you are watching this video before Swift 5.9 is released, because it will introduce if and switch has expressions. If you want to learn more about the proposal, check out the link in the description. That's it for this video. In the next one, we will explore result builders in Swift. My name is Pete, and this, this is Swift and Tips. Thanks for watching and have a great day.